You are absolutely right that John McCain has not uh, talked about my Muslim faith, and you're absolutely right that that has not Christian come faith. at my, my Christian faith. I'm sure you have seen this clip many times, and I'm sure you have wondered why in the world would George Stephanopoulos, the interviewer, stop and correct Barack Obama? Well, listen up. Right, Billy Cunningham, let's continue. I think one of the main uh, benefactors of the Democrats uh, being in the White House and in the Capitol and uh, gauging and judging what they do is the Honorable Brent Bozell of the Media Research Center. And at this point, uh, there's two issues I want to take up with Brent Bozell, who's the president of that great group. One is a letter that he has written to ABC News' as President David Weston calling on ABC News to publicly address and resolve what appears to be a clear violation of journalistic ethics by ABC's chief Washington correspondent, George Stephanopoulos. So to get to Brent Bozell, let's go to him right now. And Brent, welcome again to the Bill Cunningham Show. Hi, Bill. How you doing? Well, tell the American people, what did uh, former Clintonista and ABC News' chief Washington correspondent, George Stephanopoulos, do, if anything? Well, uh, about a week ago, there was an article in the Politico newspaper uh, about how four gentlemen have been participating in a daily policy or political strategy call going back 17 years, the four of them being James Carville, Paul Begala, George Stephanopoulos, and now White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel. And there's a fifth musketeer on occasion, Stan Greensburg, the pollster. And it's all about how these these, uh, four very close friends have have politicized and strategized uh, for 17 years. And, of course, there's nothing wrong with that except for one little thing. One of those four left in 1996 or 1998, uh, I guess it was, to become uh, an anchor at ABC News. And now he is the Washington political uh, uh, director at ABC News. He's not supposed to be participating in strategy calls with the Democratic Party anymore. You're not saying that's going on like now, are you? You're not talking about 10 years ago. You're talking about now. Well, what I'm saying is that 10 years ago when he took this job, conservatives were saying, wait a minute, there's a conflict of interest. And what I'm saying is 10 years later, apparently it's been going on every day. So for 10 years... While George Stephanopoulos worked his way up the ladder of ABC, he was consulting with Carville and Begala, and uh, also Rahm Emanuel, to develop strategies while working for ABC News. For the for the for the Democratic Party. Now uh, they will say, well, he he wasn't strategizing. He was he was analyzing when he went to work for ABC News. So the other three continued to strategize. He now analyzed. Although in the article, Begala and Carville are quoted as talking about how George Stephanopoulos is a is a, is a um, uh, quintessential part of this organization. Now, when Politico dot com broke this story about a week or two weeks ago, I take it there was a media firestorm of other journalists <laughs> yes, uh, of other journalists to come forward and say you can't do this. I take it from your response that may not have happened. Happened. There was a lot of wailing, of, of wailing gnashing of teeth, oh. and wailing of, 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 of jaws, and, and beating of breasts on this one. No, nobody cares. This, this is business as usual in Washington, D.C. They see nothing wrong. Hey, just think about this for a second, Bill. What do you think might be the reaction if uh, Fox News hired Karl Rove to be its Sunday anchor? Never mind anything else. Just that fact alone um, is, is a preposterous no. cons- uh, thought. No. But now let's 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 wonder if if what it would be like if ten years from now we found out that ever since he'd been named he'd been participating in daily strategy phone calls with top Republican operatives uh, putting together strategy for the Republican Party. What do you think would be the reaction? You don't think that would have flown? Uh, no. <laughs> you, don't think, you, don't think, you don't think if Andy Card had met repeatedly uh, every day with Brian Williams of NBC News and it was discovered that that meetings had taken place during the time Bush was in the White House, uh, you, you think there may have been a bit of an outcry against Brian Williams? Yeah, yeah, but, but you know, what's even more preposterous is the defense that ABC is throwing up. One of them is, but wait a minute, this just goes to show he's got great access. Oh my. Now, now, come on. Yes, it is wonderful to have great access. Does he do the same thing on the Republican side every morning? Do you think he strategizes with, with, uh, with Karl Rove? for the Republican Party? I don't think he does. You know, you know, this morning I watched a little bit of Stephanopoulos, and I didn't hear an apology, an explanation, or anything. Did I miss something? No, no. He, he, has, he has sent out you know, his, his deniers uh, to deny uh, but the, and, and to attack me, and which, which is fine. I don't, I don't care about that. The only problem is they have is that in denying it, again, you've got Carville and Begala quoted in this piece talking about Stephanopoulos. They've got a problem here. So George, so George meets with Rahm Emanuel, Obama's chief of staff, on the telephone every now and then, plotting Democratic strategies, and then he appears on the ABC News, sometimes on the nightly news, but almost every Sunday morning, also doing stories throughout the week, as some objective arbitrator of politics that he helped to form. No, no, it's not every now and then. According to this article, it's every day. Every, every day. day. Every day. Every day. Now, now, they came back at me and they said, well, they weren't 
they weren't conference calls, they're individual phone calls. Yeah, okay, all right, then I Brumbo Dog got it wrong again. I mean, why not just admit you're doing something wrong when you're doing something like this? And so I guess these who are attacking you, if it was discovered that Andy Card was meeting with uh, Brian Williams every day during the time uh, he was the chief of staff to George Bush, there wouldn't be any outcry against Brian Williams, correct? Oh, I see, I would have no problem. I would have no problem with, with Brian Williams have the, having the kind of of uh, connections that would get him on the phone with Andy Card every day, so long as two things. So long as he was doing it with the other side, A, and B, it was just getting information, not a two-way street, not offering information, not offering advice, not offering strategy, which apparently, this is not, apparently, the article says he would. And if you want to, you know, if the White House wants to have a problem with it, they don't have a problem with me. They have a problem with Paul Begala and, yeah. and James Carville and the political, all of which reported this. Now, in a related matter, it came out two or three days ago that Jeffrey Immelt, the CEO of General Electric, has been named as an advisor to uh, Barack Hussein Obama. At the same time, GE owns NBC, CNBC, and MSNBC. Has anyone commented on the fact that the, that, that the boss of MSNBC, they're completely in the tank for Obama, and CNBC tends to be a little more legitimate because it's business, but certainly NBC News is in the tank. Has anyone suggested that the, that the fact that the CEO of NBC News is an advisor to Obama, and that also may be a conflict of interest? Well, it, it is because he is the head of MSNBC and, and, and NBC that this guy qualifies as an advisor for, for Barack Obama. <laughs> you think Rupert Murdoch is an advisor to Barack Obama? Well, can you imagine if Rupert Murdoch was named as an advisor to George Bush and Dick Cheney? What would happen to Rupert Murdoch and what would happen to oh, oh, wait a minute, Bill. You're forgetting. In, 19, in, 2000, in 2002, there was a meeting, I believe it was, I think it was a meeting, with George Bush called some people down to give them a briefing on the war on terror. And one of the people he brought down to give this briefing to was Roger Ailes of Fox. And all hell yeah, broke remember. loose. Yeah. All hell broke loose. Now, this was, again, a one-way street. But what you're talking about is a two-way street where the person is participating in the advancement of the agenda of Barack Obama, which Roger Ailes was not doing. So, but, so M. Mel can, can adjust, change, influence the policy of the United States of America that NBC News is supposed to cover objectively. Right, and, and we're supposed to accept that. And then they wonder why nobody watches MSNBC. Then they wonder why NBC's ratings have dropped by 50% in the last 10 years. Then they wonder why 89% of the public doesn't believe the news media anymore. They wonder about this. So, Brent Brozell, it's official. ABC's in the tank for Rahm Emanuel and Barack Obama. NBC is in the tank. New York Times is in the tank. What's left is talk radio. And Senator Stabenow of Michigan, that well-run state with that great city of Detroit, right in her backyard in Michigan, they're coming after the one element of the media that's not in the tank, which is conservative talk radio. And haven't I been saying that, Bill? Haven't I said yeah. this on your show? Yeah. That you guys are public enemy number one, and I've been saying this for a year and a half, and here it comes. You all are public enemy number one. They're out to destroy you because you're the only ones who haven't drunk the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what nation am I living in? Is it is it is it Russia? Is it Hungary? Yeah. Circa 1958. Soviet America. I, 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 I'm watching this going on. I'm watching the major news media organizations in this country have been bought, paid for, and corrupted by the Obama administration, and nobody is covering it. But Politico.com, conservative talk radio, and the media.